We just found out from Kamala Harris's campaign team, they have basically said Donald Trump's running scared. He's chicken. He will not meet her on a previously agreed debate stage. I want to ask you first, Susan, as to this idea that now he wants to go to Trump-friendly, you know, grounds of Fox and he'll do it before some huge live kind of audience. I mean, what's the idea of the fact that he actually won't meet Kamala where he agreed to meet her before? He's, he is scared of her. That's why his attacks on her are basically hateful and mean. There's no substance to anything he has to say about the vice president. And let's not forget, now we're going to have a candidate up there. We're going to see two people debating. And I do believe she will debate him, and even if it means going to Fox. But she's going to present a case. And Donald Trump is going to be left stummering and, and wandering off and not finishing his sentences and talking about sharks and boats and who knows what. And I think he is afraid of that comparison. Even if he, they both agree to a Fox debate, I still think he says at the end of the day, I'm a no show. Look, Congresswoman, if I'm if I'm Kamala Harris, I say exactly what she's done. Meet me at the one you agreed to do. Maybe she does the Fox one. She's not required to do it. We've seen an unscripted Donald Trump. That was NABJ. We see what it's like. I mean, they, and we also see when you have somebody like Harris Faulkner from Fox News, who was very Trump friendly, kind of giving him the softballs for him to answer. He still digs himself into a hole. So do you think that there's going to be a Fox hosted debate between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump? I wouldn't speculate on that, but I'll say uh, Kamala Harris could debate Donald Trump uh, anywhere at any time, and she will mm -hmm. run circles around. He is no match uh, for her intellect and her preparedness or her vision for a more just America. And the issue of reproductive freedom, abortion access, and maternal justice, that is a winning issue for people from every walk of life. As you see, dads are organizing on behalf of their daughters, uh, women are organizing, young people are organizing, and Donald Trump and Project 2025 are acting in a extremist march uh, towards a ban on abortion, which is a nation of forced birth. What could be more violent than that? So he is, he is no match for Kamala. And again, we're going to go out here and do our job uh, to build the broad and diverse winning coalition to ensure that we are successful in November. First to both of you on this debate back and forth. Alex, Trump is changing the rule. I mean, Trump says the Democrats changed the, changed the conditions because, of course, they brought a new candidate. He did agree to ABC. Uh, now he's saying, totally different race. I want Fox and I want an audience here. Uh, is he going to win that argument? I, I think he is. I mean, look, to be fair, it was a completely different candidate. Mm -hmm. um, 17 million people voted in primaries for Joe Biden and selected him. And then 2,500 people went online in a, a couple days ago and said, no, we have a new candidate. That agreement. I mean, she is a vice president, uh, though. So uh, yeah. Understood. Um, if, uh, if President Biden wants to keep that first debate, uh, I think that's fine. I think it's completely acceptable and, frankly, uh, deserved for that to be a new conversation. Okay, your response, Maria? I think it shows that he's terrified mm -hmm. of debating somebody as good as Kamala Harris. I think it shows that he wants to do it uh, on Fox, he wants to do it with an audience, mm -hmm. because those two things are like security blankets for him. And that's what he needs right now. This race has completely discombobulated him and the people around him. They have no idea how to approach running against somebody who is so accomplished, who is whip smart, who has a background as a prosecutor, and Donald Trump is a 34 times convicted felon. So fair, uh, th those are different venues. Fox, a very different network from, from ABC. The audience is something that he uh, thrives on or believes he could thrive on. So what's your response to that? A, a couple of things. Number one, it's important to remember, we had a Biden campaign and a Trump campaign. And for the first time in American history, we had a presidential campaign go blue screen of death, uh, literally completely brick and melt down. And the party on a dime has said, eh, we're going to anoint somebody new. Um, it is absolutely but critical. But I'm asking specifically but, about no, no, the conditions. I understand. They're different, it's a different <laughs> network. It's, it's it is a different very much it's more Trump-friendly. It's right? a different campaign. Mm. It's a completely different dynamic exactly. that, therefore, let's have a conversation about how to debate. So um, is, the is American it, people deserve, frankly, to be introduced to her. I know how those previous debates have been. I remember watching Tulsi Gabbard do her, uh, her magic in the debate uh, mm -hmm. uh, the last time that uh, Vice President 
Harris ran. Um, and I also know how the last debate went for President Trump and Joe Biden. I do not believe in any way this is a, a lack of interest in being on a debate stage with her. But why should so that why not, not why be not a... So why not just keep it? Uh, that, because that's what complete, they agreed to. Uh, that's what... Is who he afraid to? of doing that's it what, on ABC? No, that's what Joe Biden agreed to. Is Joe Trump Biden afraid should of come doing it on debate. ABC? No, of course not. Well, then why not do just, it? Just like the first debate was on CNN. It? Great, let's do both. Both At, what? Uh, let's do a September 4th on Fox. That wasn't what was agreed to At, originally. That wasn't the candidate. And let me ask you a question. Do, do, you, do you believe this is actually a conversation now, negotiation between the two campaigns, or is it possible that they just go their separate ways? It could be very possible that they go their separate mm -hmm. ways, and I actually think it would be a really dumb decision for Donald Trump to not show up at the ABC debate. As I understand it, ABC has already agreed to do the airtime. So Vice President Kamala Harris will be there as the Democratic Party's presidential candidate. She could very well have these two hours to herself, which would be fantastic. Mm -hmm. There could be an empty chair there that she puts there and to demonstrate that Donald Trump did not have the pants to show up, that he is concerned about debating somebody as qualified as she is, okay. and it will, you know, she'll have all the airtime to herself. Oh, oh. They were really meant for you and me, uh, or the audience no. in front of him. It was, it was meant for his MAGA universe, although some people wonder, what was that message and why? Well, a lot of it is the way Donald Trump is uh, looking at prosecuting this election. And, and this is one of the struggles between his current campaign team, which is a very sophisticated uh, team of players. They have done a lot uh, to get this campaign much better organized and focused on moving towards the goal of winning the election. And then Donald Trump has a different idea when he wants to put his daughter-in-law in charge of the RNC. They wind up firing people. Um, and then he's still trying to pull it back in the direction he wants to go. And a good example of that was the what we saw on the stage, where that was not the narrative his campaign team wanted to put out there. But it was the narrative Donald Trump wants to prosecute because in his mind's eye, he needs more of his base to turn out. The idea of expanding the universe of people who are voting for him, that's too tiresome. That's way too involved. It's <laughs> easier to get the people who love me and want to be with me and in my presence to come out and vote. So that's going to be a real challenge in, in some of these key battleground states. That's why the polling folks is so important to understand and not get tripped up on. Even when it's good for Harris right now, you can't get tripped up on, the, on what those numbers say because it's not a reflection of who actually will vote. It's not a reflection of, of what the ground game is in any given state, in any given right. county, in any given district. And that's where the Democrats, as we talked about in our last hour, um, uh, with Mr. Kinnaman, who's, who's running the, uh, that operation, have put the people in place. The Trump campaign have not. So when he's on that stage saying what he's saying, to your point, Ali, yep. he's not talking about to folks to expand the number of people who will turn out. He's trying to make sure that his hardcore base turns out in a larger number. Right, and that's where the enthusiasm part comes into this conversation. If people are enthused, right. that helps them to vote. And if groups of people are enthused, and, and Molly, this is interesting because uh, Donald Trump's attacks on Kamala Harris are not landing for a couple of reasons. Some of them are just bad. They're just not that effective. <laughs> um, and some of them are entirely turned around by this enthusiastic base of support supporters of Kamala Harris turned into memes and turned into uh, things that cause people to get enthusiastic. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the answer. I think I think Michael's point is right. Polls are always tight in this country with presidential races or have been for many right. cycles now. The issue is going to come down to who wants to support who, who, who signs up to volunteer, who donates and who comes out to vote. Yeah, I also think one of the things about Harris, which we've seen before with Obama, is there's joy. And so he's trying to turn that joy against her. You know, those videos of her laughing, that was one attack, or her cooking. And I think people just like that. It's been a long, long, you know, eight years, 10 years since Trump came into the fray. And I think people are refreshed by just a normal person cooking a turkey. And so I do think that there is a kind of joy in this campaign that we haven't seen in a while in American politics. I also think 
there, you know, people are galvanized for her. And Trump has only the same material. He just keeps recycling the same attacks. So a lot of the attacks he's using on her, he used on Hillary Clinton. He and you know, and I think that you can't just keep using these same attacks. You got to think of something new. Actually, well, what is the, yeah. what is the does, does Kamala Harris respond? I mean, she's already responded to yeah. it to some degree, but. Does she focus on it or just no. say, look at me no. and let's move on? Yeah, I don't think she needs to focus on it because everybody else knows exactly what's going on. And it absolutely is not an acceptable path. And, and I commend you, Alex, for <laughs> having to spin something that is just completely unspinnable. And to me, he is going to continue to do that. The, the Republican talking point now in the spin is that, oh, it, what he meant was that she's phony. No, what he meant is what he meant because he's a sexist, he's a misogynist, and he's a racist. And so he's going to continue to do that. As a Democrat, I say bring it on. This is not going to do anything to add voters that he needs to win. It's going to do everything to alienate blocks okay. of voters. And so she, Kamala Harris, is going to focus on what she wants to do for the country for the next Let four years. Let me ask you a question to a point that Alex raised. Does the vice president have to answer directly whether she was uh, honest and open about a decline of the president's abilities. I am sure she will get asked that when she gets in front of the mm -hmm. media and I'm sure she will answer it. I think that is a phony theme that Republicans are trying to use because again, I think they are so concerned about running against somebody that they have no idea how to run and to me that somebody that brings it's a constellation of qualities that uh, make up what a, a, the, the political kryptonite mm -hmm. that represents she represents for somebody like Donald Trump. Well, we got 94 days. Is it 94 <laughs> days to, to see how it plays out? Alex, Maria, thanks so much for thanks, taking the Jim. hard questions. I appreciate Thank it for both of you. Folks, this is a, a very bad surprise for Trump because he felt everyone was going to let him get away with it. Everyone was going to buy his excuse for why he didn't want to debate, right? Because he was like, well, I agreed to debate uh, Joe Biden, not Harris. And then, then his argument, remember this, then his argument changed was, well, I'm not saying I won't debate her uh, when he actually said that, but I'm not going to debate her because she's not the official nominee yet and blah, 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 blah. And then now she's, you know, hasn't been proclaimed at convention yet, but she's got enough delegates secured that she's the presumptive nominee, much like Joe Biden was when they first debated. Because when they first debated, neither both of them had enough delegates, but neither of them had been confirmed at convention. Now Harris is in the exact same position Trump was in in the first debate, which is uh, with enough delegates. So that now they had the narrative had to change again. And now he's like, well, I won't debate you there because that was a Biden versus Trump debate, not a uh, not a campaign versus campaign event, which is which is stupid. But I will maybe debate you on Fox. It's it's looking awful. And you see some Republicans desperately try to defend it, but no one's buying it. And so Democrats, whether it's in Congress, you saw uh, Ayanna Presley there, or whether it's in the media, are absolutely tearing into Trump because he felt he got away with it. He felt he dodged the Harris debate, but it turns out he got a nasty surprise because no one's buying his BS.